I'm with a man today uh, who was born on 17th of March, uh, 1972. He's a very decorated journalist. And of course, he was born by Margaret and John Cabletta. He is uh, a politician and a businessman and a very outspoken man, as many of you have seen of, on the recent interviews in the elections. He's called Joseph Cabletta, and today I'm with him. Uh, how are you, sir? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm good. How is CTV? CTV is very fine. Okay, wonderful. Mm. Um, we've seen you in elections, a very outspoken man, and uh, a, a pastor, a businessman. All spheres, you've been everywhere. You've spoken mm. about the president, vilified him. A, a lot of things have been happening. And after elections, of course, you lost. Did, did you consider that you lost the elections? Uh, well, um, I'm not so sure I lost. I didn't win. You, you didn't win? And those are two different things. And mm. the, the opposite of winning is not losing? Not all the time. Because mm. um, uh, our politics is shaped in a different way. Um, from Because there is, um, uh, let's just say, I didn't win. Mm. Mm. You didn't win. Mm. And you scored only 0.44% of votes? Uh, no. <laughs> mm. That is according to Biawakama's fictitious, mm. uh, you know, reports. There, there is no way those, and I've said that before, and mm. uh, I really lose respect for anybody who quotes what Electoral Commission came up with as results. Mm. They were all fictitious. They were not from the polling stations. We proved that. Mm. There was no internet. There is no way they could have been getting um, results from the elections. And of course, I, I've seen them giving me um, uh, which is not to say that I won, don't mm. get me wrong. Mm. Yeah, but I see some of the results they gave me on places where I have DR forms and I just laugh. Mm. So it's total fiction. It is absolute fiction, way up there with science fiction and so on. It's uh, Yabakama, they just give him things to read. The elections are organized by SFC. Um, they give him things to read and he's just like a news anchor. He just reads what they give him. Mm. So it, it, it's absolute rubbish. Like. And I went in there to have a first-hand experience for myself, mm. how it works. And uh, I did things which a few other people did, because I really wanted to know what was at the Tali Center. Mm. And um, I sent intelligent people there, and they picked up for me things which were happening there, and it was so sad. Mm. It is very, very, very sad. You as Joseph Cabletta, mm. you know, out there in your room, on your bed, mm. what got into your mind to say, I want to be the president of Uganda, probably to change this and that? What is that thing that triggered you to become, to, to contest to become a president? No, there are quite a number of things because, uh, not just for myself, for every Ugandan mm. who suffers the same things and who looks at the mismanagement of our country and uh, how it's been going down and down and down. And now to a point where none of the people in this country believe that the government has any goodwill towards them. Mm. Uh, they kind of feel they're on their own. Mm. The government only needs them in terms of taxes, in terms of, you know, um, th areas where they can contribute to the ruling class. Mm. But the ruling class has no thought whatsoever mm. uh, for the ordinary people. So these are not thoughts that are unique to Kableta. Mm. It's just that maybe other people do not have, uh, may, 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 maybe the, I don't know, um, wherewith or or maybe the guts to come out and stand, and I did. But there are so many people who think just like me, mm. uh, millions of them who think just like me, and who mm. see what's happening, mm. and um, who would want to see um, a government that really is concerned about And, and what people. is that that is paining so much that you see, sh probably sh you can't li really live with, with, without or with it? I mean, a, a number of things. For me, uh, of, of course there are a number, but mm. I will concentrate on the one which was... Uh, you know, at the, the, the fulcrum of my campaign, mm. and that is the issue of financial liberation. Mm. And the fact that uh, all the resources of the country now, as we speak, are being um, very greedily and voraciously shared out among a very few clique of ruling class mm. to the exclusion of the millions of Ugandans. Haven't and they tried? We've seen a yoga, we've seen youth livelihood uh, program, we've seen, we've seen a lot of things that are, that are coming out. I'm talking about resources. Mm. I'm talking about gold, not a mioga. Mm. I'm talking about oil. I'm talking about land. Mm. You see, that's the thing. Um, uh, you, 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 you let the ruling class throw crumbs at people, and then they are taking everything. Mm. I mean, we have billions of dollars of gold. We have, now they have taken also coffee, which is about 800, 700 million dollars. And so all the lucrative businesses taken up by just a few people. And of course, uh, in order to keep 
certain people placated, they will get them and throw them, you know, some crumbs and then they fight over those. And even many of the crumbs never reach anyway. And uh, those programs are never meant to work. They are just meant to give people some, some hope. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as uh, what's, it, what's it called, who said that a politician is a dealer in hope. Mm -hmm. um, so they have to create hope. You know, now there's this, now there's this model, there's this what. But the truth is they are dividing out um, mm. the, the, the resources of the country mm. and um, very greedily and without any thought whatsoever about anybody else in this country. Because as far as they, con they are concerned, they thought they, all the resources in Uganda belong to a small clique of a family. Mm. Uh, and that's mm. how they think. And they are completely justified in, the, in their mind that that's how it should be. Everybody else should just be comfortable sitting back and watching them rule and reign over the okay, sources. Uh, Mr. Kableta, mm. um, you, you're talking about financial mm. liberation. Mm. And what are you doing to realize your dream probably right now because mm. you've been silent? Of course, not like how you've been outspoken in elections and campaigns. What are you doing to realize your dream or you, you gave up? Um, uh, it's amazing that you say maybe you have, uh, <laughs> you've not been watching TV. I'm not actually, there is no president, former president candidate who is more outspoken than me. None. Mm. Uh, none. I have not been silent. I was out. Uh, I made noise about forced vaccination. I made noise about ending the lockdown. Uh, and I'm continuing to talk about issues that affect Ugandans. So um, uh, to say I'm saying it, yesterday there was one TV station here, the other day there was another and the other, mm. and it has been like that since. So, no, I'm not silent. Maybe you haven't been tuning on your screens, or maybe you've been only been watching CTV. Mm. But um, I cannot be silent. Mm. There is no place for being silent. Mm. And when you come out, you, 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 you don't stop. That's not how I do things. I really, really, I'm seeing something ahead there, and I'm not going to rest until, you know, that thing has been achieved. Apart from talking about it, is there something that can really pull the government to act or you or is there something you're doing to help or can you work with the government to help? What do you mean? Work with the government? To help because you, you seem to have knowledge about financial liberation, what they should do and talking about it doesn't seem to change anything. Oh my God. Mm. It's like saying, can, can you work with vampires to protect the blood bank? That's not how it works. They, are, they have no, absolutely no interest in helping anybody. I don't, think you, I don't think you people really, really understand what we are dealing with. Mm. They have no interest whatsoever in helping. They have every interest in impoverishing. Okay? Mm. They believe that poor people are easier to govern. And, uh, you know, it's, more, it's a lot more difficult for poor people to get involved in politics. And they would rather they don't. So the, um, uh, the, the agenda to impoverish people is so strong on Museveni's agenda. Mm. As an individual, I'm not talking about general system, mm. the president himself, mm. that is at the heart of everything he does to impoverish people. Now, how can I, who wants to empower people economically, work with somebody who is working to disempower them? Okay, it doesn't work like that. That's why I can't work with him, because uh, he's pointing this way, I'm pointing this way. Mm. Okay, so... Uh, but there is nothing to work with. They, he, he's achieving his goals, okay? Most recently now using COVID to create a, a, a what I call a caste system, a system. I don't know if the word is caste or chest. No, it's actually uh, caste mm. is the word. Um, system where there is, you know, one group, then the other group, then the other group. You understand? And it's a very powerful tool for political manipulation, mm. creating a caste system. Now, that's why some people are going to school, others are on Zoom, others are nowhere mm. okay that's why um uh, the education system has been systematically dismantled mm. okay over the period of time now look at somebody who is finishing p7 who has sat for p7 mm. uh when i sat for p7 in 1984 i could read books of this volume i mean i would read mm. now look at the people who are coming out of p7 mm. is it their fault no it isn't it is the fault of the, uh, this government which has systematically you know diluted the level of education what could now, be the problem mr kableta because we've seen covid come mm. and how could they possibly do this uh, mm. what do you mean how could they do it because uh, schools are closed because there are threats of covid 19 uh infecting uh, because the, we are having the second lockdown mm. that, that that is actually being lifted and schools were closed, I think now two years, because of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, the kids could die, the parents, you, you see what is happening. So how could they do it? Um, I was trying to explain to you something. So mm -hmm. when it, it, because it hasn't, it hasn't only started. COVID was just like the, the, the final step they, they took, like something which they needed to finally, you know, uh, go for the 
um, uh, for the final coup, it started with all the diluting of education mm -hmm. throughout the country. Now, UP was a very good idea and a very good thing, but you know, it, was, it has systematically, over the period of time, diluted, um, uh, demoralized teachers, um, made schools just basically go by the rate of dropping out. Now we're almost at 70% mm -hmm. of people who start P1 and never finish P7. And that was not the case, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, previously. So now, while we might celebrate those who join school, because it's, there is this UPE, but very few of them finish, only 30% finish P7. Mm -hmm. And now, without p finishing P7, you've not even acquired enough literary skills to help you ahead. You know, so basically almost illiterate without at least P7. Now, even those who are finishing P7, what's the level of education that they have? Real, real learning. What can they do in comparison to what they could do before? Now, um, those are the issues. So now, and it has been systematic going down. Now, when COVID came, it was an opportunity. Okay? If you've been trying to impoverish people for 30 years, COVID is the perfect opportunity to now kill the entire middle class in the name of preventing COVID, kill the entire education in the name of preventing COVID and do everything you've willed to do, create a, a police state, create fear and panic in the name of COVID. I'll tell you this, schools in Kenya, who has, Kenya has more COVID deaths than Uganda and more COVID positive cases than Uganda. Schools started in January and are going on, January 2021, mm -hmm. and are ongoing. What is so special about Ugandan schools that we are the ones who are infecting? Is COVID, uh, is COVID a Ugandan problem? So what could be the motive? Kenya, I've just told you the motive. Kenya schools are open, Tanzania they never closed, Rwanda they are open, Burundi they are open, Uganda we are still waiting for a man and his wife to sit down over dinner table and decide when to open schools. The motive is to, dis to create a caste system where there are these illiterate people, they are supposed to be servants, they are supposed to serve the ruling class. Then there is a shrinking middle class which the ruling class need for purposes of you know, their expertise in different areas, which middle class has shrunk seriously already. Then there are the rulers. So now, COVID has helped Museveni create the perfect caste system that he has always wanted to create. Mm -hmm. And now it was a dream for him. It was a dream for him. Like, it, like I have not seen somebody, he's not going to let it go, I can assure you of that. We are going to be sitting here and watching every other country going about their business while Uganda is still in COVID, COVID, COVID. Because we have a president who has waited for such an opportunity where he can pretend that destroying people's lives is for their own good or for their, to save their lives. Tanzania woke up from some kind of slumber and they got good leadership about six years ago. Now, I was looking, the balance of trade between Tanzania and Kenya is actually positive for Tanzania. Tanzania sells more goods to Kenya than Kenya sells to Tanzania. Okay? Tanzania is positive, about $24 million. Now, do you know what the balance of trade between Uganda and Kenya is? It's about negative $1 billion. In other words, we just buy, get everything from them. We hardly sell anything there. Mm. Okay? So, we are just bystanders as the economies of the countries around us are growing, including Rwanda. Okay? Mm. Now, how long are we going to be deceived that COVID is this big thing for which countries which have lost more people than us are open? So Mr. Open. Joseph, what is our ultimate solution? To this. What are we looking at? Yes. Getting rid of this leadership. There is no such thing as retiring. There's not going to be any retiring from the president. Mm. Okay. There is, um, uh, I'm not telling them to do that. But I'm telling them that there are things we can do in the, inter in the meantime. Because, of course, we know that uh, he has filled the whole place with all this military and fear and so on. And uh, there is lack of self-expression. And, you know, there's, yeah, but, uh, if you cross a certain line, then, you know, certain forces come for you and so on. So there is fear among Ugandans and there is a limit to what they are going to do. And uh, in as much as we can call them to rise up, uh, we know what is, what is feasible and what is not. Okay? But in the meantime, there are so many things that can be done as we prepare for that moment. Okay? Because we are not the only country that has been ruled for 30-something years by a dictator who seemed invincible. But when they seem invincible is actually when they are their, their weakest. Remember what happened to Mobutu? Uh, 30 how many years? 32, 33 years. And people have given up, they have just decided to... Then one minute they wake up and Mobutu is no more. But then uh, Zaire is not ready for life after Mobutu. Now we have to start as a nation being ready for life after Museveni and making sure that his plans of succession do not happen. Okay? Because he has a plan. And while he's closing everybody out from the political space, he's actually building something down underground which is just about to blow up in people's faces. And now if they find, it finds them not ready because they have not been preparing themselves. Then actually, in as much as it's going to be the most unpopular thing, 
it might take place because you are not counter-organizing. So we can organize. And the organization doesn't say that we are going to let him rule for life. But then the thing is, that if he rules for life, how old is he? Okay? Mm. But we don't, I mean, if something happens before that, I mean, Mugabe was supposed to rule for life, wasn't he? But then something happened and he was out before he died. Okay, he died just shortly after. But then he, so there are things which happen. And we have to be ready for life after Museveni. Mm. The question is not whether he's going to go. He's going to go one way or the other. Mm. The question is, are we as Ugandans ready now to pick up the pieces of this total decades of misrule? Well, that is Mr. Joseph Kableta. You've heard everything from the horse's mouth. Uh, keep it CTV. See you next time.